Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me. I have this really exciting bit of artificial intelligence to share with you. And for some of you, this this will be something you've already seen before. But for quite a few of you, based on the conversations I've had recently, it really won't be. It'll be quite an eye-opening experience. So I want to show you this uh device this piece of software called chat gpt for those who haven't heard of it you're going to be quite astounded it's a, a highly sophisticated ai system that can create profound sentences and paragraphs and essays based on the instructions that you give it so it's a kind of a pre-trained language model a, that extracts from a, a huge body of text, which is the the text that we've created, the humans have created to to publish online. It could be historical document songs, uh, literature, whatever it might be, opinion pieces. You know, we've created them over the years, and this this AI chat GPT create sophisticated sequences of words based on what we ask it to do. So what I'm going to attempt is to share the screen and give you a, a little demo because I think this is absolutely fascinating. So hopefully it's now sharing and so Let's start with a really simple example, something I um I was playing around with earlier. So we've asked it, how would Harry Enfield ask Greta Thunberg out on a date? So for some reason it um it thinks Harry Enfield is a northerner. Is he a northerner? I don't know. Um Hey up, Greta. I was wondering if you'd like to join me for a spot of lunch. We can we can talk about saving the planet and all that. I hear you're quite the expert on the matter. What do you say? Fancy a bit of nosh for the chap like me. Um so yeah, it's um it's taken the sort of comedic element of Harry Enfield. It knows who Greta is based on all of the the historical uh documentation of both of them and it's it's come out with a sort of humorous um request for a date so something slightly more serious now if we take uh another example so in 15 words what would david attenborough write as an 11th old testament commandment so Again, two very distinct styles of discourse here. So Attenborough, modern uh, nature as a documentary maker. And of course, the style of the Old Testament in Hebrew is is something that this chat uh, bot has picked up on as well. So protect nature, preserve biodiversity, act with humility and respect for life on Earth. So again, you can see it's it's producing a... A straightforward sentence and interestingly of course you you tell it how many words so within seconds it has to create the sentence knowing how many words it has a limitation and constructing the uh, order of of text uh to to make that statement so i'm now going to do something a little bit more bold and amusing now look at this right a new Smith song about cancel culture. So we all know, anyone who knows the Smiths knows what a distinct sort of style of songwriting they have. So I just think this is fantastic. Um, look, it's, it's, it's writing a song. Now, you could quite conceivably argue that it's not going to be up to the, the, the mordant uh, standards of of Morrissey in terms of lyric writing, but um, it's pretty impressive, isn't it? It's just, just churned out a song. Artists can take days, weeks, months to churn out great songs. And um, 
so it knows the sort of thing that the Smiths would write, and it knows obviously about cancel culture. Um, and then, just for distinction, I really know almost nothing about this guy at all, but I know off the top of my head that he is a very different type of artist because he's a is he hip hop or rap, whatever he is. So Jay Z, he's he's obviously very different. So we could just change it to write a new Jay Z song about cancel culture. Now, as you'll see, what it will do is it will. It will write a similar song in the sense that it's using the same kind of algorithmic um, instructions to to come up with similar lyrics, but distinct enough that it's in the style of what someone like Jay Z might might produce. Um, so yeah, this is it's, we'll talk in a minute about the the ramifications of this, but what a what an intriguing piece of software this is now let's i'm a blogger so i'm asking it now to write a new 350 word blog article for the philosophical philosophical muser on woke culture now i'm by no means a, a household name in the grand scheme of things but even even with my um following and google presence i uh it could consider what kind of blog i would write and it's actually if you look at it it's 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 a kind of way that i write um it knows some of the phrases i'm likely to use um the key element um to consider here of course is that although the um chat gpt is is producing a blog in seconds and not in exactly the same st style that i would certainly not the same choice of words that i would use but it's a, of a similar style i suppose in other words it it knows it's not Russell Brand writing it or Jeremy Corbyn or something. It's a, it, it knows enough to know what I wouldn't wouldn't say to the greatest extent. But the the AI here is it, it doesn't it's important to understand that it doesn't know what it's saying in terms of discerning the same kind of meaning that a human would distill because a human is a an emotional being too with a with a real experiential set of protocols and of course this is merely mirroring what it thinks humans would say based on what it knows about the contributions humans have made so it's it's it, it's not discerning it's not understanding its own self beyond the beyond the intrinsic nature of the text so that's the key distinction of course you know while it's been fun to quickly churn out this blog post in seconds you know, obviously as all writers will tell you it, there's no there's no substitute for um writing your own stuff and it, it's it's bound to be unique to you and it's bound to be original too and so and of course one of the terms and conditions of this is that you know, we we must never as a society we must never misuse it for um our own personal gain and in terms of producing stuff and claiming it as our own and using it for, for exam papers or whatever it might be. So, yeah, uh, clearly, you know, we have to respect the, uh, respect the tech and the, um, what it's, what it's designed for. But so now we're going to go even deeper. Um, so I put in here in a hundred words, write a William Blake poem about Kierkegaard's teleological suspension of the ethical now this is quite a, a complex computational task for, even for a, a human that um i mean i i love william blake's poetry i've read a lot of it kierkegaard's uh, teleological suspension of the ethical comes from his book uh, fear and trembling it's a it's a work about the uh, the story of Abraham and Isaac and uh, Abraham being asked to sacrifice Isaac and the ethical considerations around that are what 
Kierkegaard refers to here as a, a teleological suspension of the ethical. In other words, um, God is giving him a, an instruction that transcends a merely ethical proposition from his own standpoint. So this is a really complex piece of text we're asking it to produce, but and in the style of, of Blake's poetry as well. So and it knows it needs to be a hundred words. And look at that, it's rem remarkable. It's, it's no masterpiece. It's it's not on a par with, with Blake, of course, um, in original works. But this is this is profound stuff. It's the fact that it's that it's written this so quickly is is something I think to to marvel at, just in in terms of its sophisticated algorithmic ability. Um, yeah, it's it doesn't quite get the nuance in the kind the kinds of depths that a Blake or Kierkegaardian scholar would would have, of course, but really impressive, really interesting. And the last one, this is we're gonna take it to an even deeper level now. Um write a thousand word essay on Pascal's dignity of causality in relation to Harsanyi's amnesia principle. So principle. So imagine you know, imagine giving that to uh, a student or having that discussion over the a dinner table. You know, it's, it it would be a fun discussion to have. But let's see what it produces because you you need a a deep awareness of what's being said, um, even independently with the dignity of dignity of causality and the amnesia principle to to even begin to ponder it. Let alone can the two subject matters into a, a single essay and know it's got to be a thousand words but look at it it's if you're a a university student who has to hand in a paper quickly um of course we don't want a, the tool to be misused for that but i'm i'm saying in terms of its potential look at Look at what it's doing. Um, so yeah, it's it's not quite getting what the dignity of causality is. The dignity of causality is I mean it's not the it's not the pursuit of causality as a way of discovering the mystery of the universe, not only in a only in a very abstract sense, it's the dignity of causality is that God has imparted this dignity in terms of our ability to pray and seek uh, teleology and and seek meaning and narrative in our own decision making and and be able to be a, a co-operative alongside God in. In creating that narrative, so but and Han, uh, Harsanyi's amnesia principle is uh, you probably know John Rawls' veil of ignorance. Um, this is actually predates that, so it's basically that the correct moral uh, proposition in a lot of cases, not every case, but in a lot of cases, would be the decision or the proposition that you would arrive at. Uh, if you'd forgotten where you are in society, so you effectively have amnesia, so you don't know how your in own interests are affected by the moral proposition. So you're in effect, in effect, it's um, self-interest is divorced from the moral proposition. Um, but yeah, it's it's astounding, isn't it? It really is. Um, what an Im impressive piece of software um but i was i was keen to to share that with you because you know it has profound effects on on society and where we're going and this is just the beginning of course i mean imagine what it could do in you know several decades time of course just to remind you it's not uh conscious it doesn't it doesn't it wouldn't pass the turing test for example it's not conscious in the same way that a human is of course and it's not able to 
apply the same kind of behind the stage door understanding of the of the text uh, in a way that a, a human would but you know there's there's no question that this is a very impressive thing to observe and i'm just really glad to be sharing it with you i think the the one key difference between what chat gpt does and what humans do is as well as not understanding the the meaning of what it expresses is that you know human human cognition has a has a map of logical connections based on a sort of complex mental artillery artillery of of reason, logic, knowledge, experience, and of course those important emotional and and spiritual outputs. And Chat GPT is is merely a a simulator of those expressions in in textual form. Although merely perhaps is understating it a bit because it's it's a remarkable achievement. Both are undertaking prodigious mathematical calculations from a huge search space of of possible known words to formulate sentences based on algorithmic instructions. Um, and that's really what the human brain is doing. If I said to you, what was your uh, highlight of, of last year, your brain would be producing a sift and, and sort and select mechanism to try to extrapolate from a lot of data to bring to a lot of episodic memory and to bring to the forefront of your consciousness something that you might say qualifies and maybe it's a, your a day at the beach with your beloved you know, on a on july the 20th or something like that but um it's the brain is undertaking computations as it's as it's doing that um and i think finally you know, even if we could create ai that passes the turing test there'll always be a distinction between what the AI program is doing and what humans are doing. You know, this, however advanced AI becomes and however successfully it can simulate the kind of um, things humans write when they're expressing themselves uh, intellectually, romantically, poetically, theologically, say, dramatically, all of the great ways that humans achieve those things. You know, it would never have the the evocation of meaning uh the ai system wouldn't because you know it's as we, as we know being human is far more than a, about just the the text um so yeah just that's that's probably it from 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 that perspective i just wanted to um to share that with you and um and now work out how to stop sharing this screen and end the call, which doesn't seem to be working. Ah, there we go. Sorry for that uh, brief interlude. Talk amongst yourselves. Uh, yes, so I had to stop sharing on the other screen. So, yeah, I hope that was interesting. Um, and, uh, yeah, thank you for, for watching. And uh, the link to my blog is below um, for further further reading. Thank you very much.